the long tirade of Pakistan about situation in the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. The worst violation of human rights is terrorism. When practiced as an instrument of state policy, it is a war crime. What my country and other neighbors in our region are facing today is Pakistan's long-standing policy of sponsoring terrorism, the consequences of which have spread well beyond our region. Mr. President, only last week, the international community honored the memory of thousands of innocent victims from around the world who lost their lives not far from here in New York 15 years ago in a most horrifying terror attack. The world has not yet forgotten that the trail of that dastardly attack led all the way to Abbottabad in Pakistan. The land of Takshila, one of the greatest learning centers of ancient times, is now host to the Ivy League of Terrorism. It attracts aspirants and apprentices from all over the world. The effect of its toxic curriculum are felt across the globe. It is ironical, therefore, that we have seen today the preaching of human rights and ostensible support for self-determination by a country which has established itself as the global epicenter of terrorism. Mr. President, shortly before Pakistan gave its hypocritical sermons in this August House today, its envoy in New Delhi was summoned in the context of the most recent of the terror attacks in Uri that claimed 18 Indian lives. That terrorist attack is a part of a trail of continuous flow of terrorists trained and armed by our neighbor and tasked to carry out terrorist attack in my country. What we see in Pakistan, Mr. President, is a terrorist state which analyzes billions of dollars, much of it diverted from international aid to training, financing, and supporting terrorist groups as militant proxies against its neighbors. Terrorist entities and their leaders, including many designated by the UN, continue to roam its streets freely and operate with state support. With the approval of authorities, many terrorist organizations raise funds openly in flagrant violations of Pakistan's international obligations. Mr. President, even today, we have heard support by the Pakistan's Prime Minister for a self-acknowledged commander of a known terrorist organization, Hizbul Mujahideen. Pakistan is a country with democracy deficit. In fact, it practices terrorism on its own people. It extends support to extremist groups. It suppresses minorities and women and denies basic human rights, including through draconian laws. As a democracy, India is firmly resolved to protect all our citizens from all acts of terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. We cannot and will not allow terrorism to prevail. Finally, Mr. President, we have heard Pakistan, whose nuclear proliferation record is marked by deception and deceit, talking about restrained renunciation and peace. Similar false promises it has made to us, the international community, on terrorism. Perhaps renunciation of lies and self-restraint on threats could be a good place for Pakistan to start.